I'm beginning the work on the front legs for this uh, Maloof low back. So I've got the low back seat here and the bandsawed bandsawed front legs and I'm look I'm working on lining up this joint on the leg uh, and and showing the getting the boundary of that joint defined. Now, I did just use the, the template to bandsaw out the leg. Um, I used a one inch carbide blade on the bandsaw. I use that practically for everything, even these small joints I just cut in and and so obviously that'll have to be smoothed out with with files but the the thing I'm first worried about is the template template fits right in that joint so that that joint is very accurate and uh, and okay. So now I want to match the joint on the front leg so that it will uh, go into this joint. Now I can just test. I'm just a little bit fat on this distance here, which is good. I want to be a little bit fat. I sawed it, band sawed it with, uh, with a little bit of extra, maybe a six and then to 30 second on each side from what the template said. But now I can see that I'm just a little bit fat. Just a, oh gosh, it's, 64th or something fat. Now, the way I deal with this is uh, I'll just use a little block plane here and just take off a little bit. But before I use the block plane, I like to get some pencil stripes on here so I can see where the block plan has removed material. So I want to make sure that I'm flat on this surface. I don't want to change that, that part of that surface. I want it to maintain that. So I've just wiped off all the pen pencil marks and it's just uh, hair and that's all I'm going to worry about right now I think that's close enough I'll may I may oh gosh it it just go it just goes in that's perfect so now what I need to do is get the boundary of the joint defined. So I made some pencil marks here uh, from the template. You can see them here. And then I want to make sure that uh, so then I just used a square. I can't see my square somewhere but this one will be okay so I use that square and I define I hold it on that flat surface there and I just 
scrape a cut, a, a line with the knife. I don't know if you can see that or not. It's, it's not very deep. But I need that cut line to put my chisel in. I'm going to route out, hand route, well, I'm going to use the power router, but I'm not, without any guides, I'm going to go close to this edge and then finally knock out the material with a, with a, uh, with uh, chisels. Now, I know that this, I know this length here, it's an inch and an eighth. So I want a line that is exactly an inch and an eighth away from this one. So I mark that with a little pencil. I can see that little pencil right there. And then again, I use the, uh, use a square to knife that right across there. So that defines where I got a route out a quarter of an inch deep. Um, by the way, I've got a I've got triangle markings on these things, so I know that this this leg actually is goes into the socket, the joint over on the other side. Uh, but um, I, I'm, I've used it to check that same dimension over there, and it's it's accurate. But now I need to move this cut line over to this face, and also to this face because. These also get routed out a quarter of an inch deep, and I need an accurate cut line, and you can see that once I had this, this line, then I knew exactly I could put my knife into that cut and, and fix the square there, and then make another cut line uh, at that position. Then I could do the same thing I, I, using this cut line as a guide, make this this cut so those are going to be the chisel there's no uh, rabbit on this outside face only on the inside face this is the inside face so i gotta now use the router and i come up close to the line i like to Put a pencil line on on these knife cuts because it helps me see it when I use the router. So I'm just going to use the router by hand, staying away, maybe a sixteenth away from each border. This face, this face, and this face as well, and uh, then clean it up with chisels.